Welcome to Computer Science 320 2015 Winter 1's Midterm 1 Practice Problems. So we're still on problem 4, we're on part 2 now, and I've repeated a bit of the intro since we'll need it. Give an efficient, correct reduction from the problem of finding a minimum spanning subgraph in a weighted, undirected graph with real valued and possibly negative edge weights to the minimum spanning tree problem on a graph with non-negative real edge weights. Okay, so we're going to start with a graph that may have negative edge weights, like the one that we were described up front, where cities are paying you to lay fiber optic cable between them. And we're going to convert that into one where we don't have negative edge weights, because negative edge weights are kind of irritating. And it says as a hint that we should think about edge contractions. So we did kind of discuss edge contractions briefly in class, but the basic idea is, say you've got this node over here, and you've got this node over here, and you know, you're going to have some weights on these 5, 3, 2, 4, 1. And you think maybe you'd like to connect these two edges together. Maybe, maybe these have a weight of uh, x. Who cares? And you'd like to contract these two edges together. You know, we did this in our problem where we were working on clustering images. So to contract them together, you're going to make a new graph. And the new graph is going to have one node, where this graph had two instead. And it's going to be connected to all the nodes that either of the old nodes were connected to. But there's only going to be one vertex left over. Now we do have to decide what should happen in this sort of situation if um, this thing were connected to this vertex over here with weight 7, and this thing were connected to this vertex over here with weight 12. What should we be connected to this vertex with in the new graph? And that's kind of situation dependent when you're doing an edge contraction. One way you can think of it is just have two edges in there between those two nodes, which makes your graph technically something called a multigraph. And one of those will have weight 7, and one of them will have weight 12. Usually, though, when we use them, we're going to want to eliminate one of the edges. Maybe we'll keep the largest, maybe we'll keep the smallest, maybe we'll add together the weights. It's kind of up to us. So let's see how that would help us here. We want to reduce the problem of finding a minimum spanning subgraph when there are negative edge weights to the problem of finding a minimum spanning tree when there are no negative edge weights. And we already saw that finding the minimum spanning subgraph in a graph with non-negative edge weights, we can solve that by finding the minimum spanning tree. That's what we proved in part one. So how do we get rid of those negative edge weights? What happens if we've got two cities that are connected by negative 5? So we're going to get paid $5 million, let's say. Who wants to get paid $5? We're going to get paid $5 million for connecting these two cities. Um, if we want a minimum spanning subgraph, do we want to not connect these two cities that are going to pay us $5 million? I mean... Obviously, we want to connect them. Even if this is, in some sense, useless to our spanning subgraph, we still want to connect them because we'll make more money by doing it, right? So we can just decide that all negative edges, you know, maybe there's another negative edge over here, negative 12, ooh, 12 million dollars. You know, maybe this is positive. So what? And, and this is positive, too, over here. And, you know, there's another edge here that's also positive and another edge that's positive. But we're at least going to include the negative edges. So one way you could think of this is, let's contract all the negative edges. If we contract all the negative edges, we're left with uh, just the nodes that we actually need to connect, uh, that we might have to pay money to connect. So uh, let's, let's give that a shot. What would it look like to contract the negative edges? We need to solve this, this problem with the red ones. Do I have an example of that here? I don't think I have two nodes that we're contracting that both have edges to the same place. So let's put in an example and figure out what we would want to do. So this is uh, 10, and this is 20. Do we want to keep both? Do we want to keep one or the other when we contract these two cities together? Well, we're never going to want to pay more 
to connect this city over here into our already contracted set over here. It doesn't matter which of these cities this one connects to in terms of making a spanning subgraph. We just need to make sure it connects to one or the other of those or at least potentially, if that's the way we're going to go. So we'd actually never use this 20 edge. If we're sure we're going to use negative 5, there's no point in using 20. We could use 10 instead. So I think when we run into this situation with the 7 and the 12, let's just draw that in in our example so we'll remember, we're going to want to keep only the 7 of those two. We're going to dump the 12 because we don't care about it. So we're going to include all the negative edges in our solution, and we're going to contract them away to get a new graph, and that new graph will be a minimum spanning subgraph problem with no negative edge weights. So that's a reduction then. Remember, a reduction is two algorithms. Algorithm one is going to take our original problem and turn it into the new problem. So contract all negative edges in G um, deleting larger edges when the result has more than one edge between one pair of nodes. And then that creates a problem, a new problem, that is the minimum spanning subgraph problem with no negative edge weights. And then we get a solution to that. We need to turn it back into a solution to the original problem. So union the solution with the set of all negative weighted edges. So we get a spanning subgraph, which we know will be a spanning tree, from the problem that has no negative edge weights, and then we throw in all of the negative edge weights. And union here, I use set notation kind of thinking, well, what if there are already some of the edges coming back from the result from the underlying problem? They actually won't be, because we've contracted all the negative edges away. So we can just throw them onto the end of the list, and we'll be good. Next up, we will solve the next part.